And I want to welcome you to uh, this free class. Um, we are going to be talking today about how we can put together a quick and easy photo book album in 2024. So most of you know that um, I do this AA project every year in December and we get to the end of the year and we go, oh shoot, we haven't made any photo books. Let's make one in December. And we madly create pages every day with prompts and put a photo book together, um, which I love. I love the process. I love this. I've been doing it for many, many years. But it kind of gets me thinking about what if we were to start the process in January and work throughout the year um, and create a photo book project um, in that way. Um, now, typically when I do my photo book project, and you'll notice that right now it's on special offer. I've put it at 50% discount. If you didn't take the class and you want more information about creating photo book projects, this is your go-to. But we're going to do kind of a condensed version today. And I want to talk about this um, album that I have been creating. I actually thought I'd only created three of them, but it looks like I have five of these projects. So in total, each one of these uh um, month review template albums in this style, there are basically, um, let me think about it, there are 24 pages. So the idea is, is that we have an introduction page, we have a last page, um, so actually there's 26 pages, and then we have um, a double page spread for each month of the year. So this is the introductory spread. You can see I've put in um, a nice date for 2024. Um, and then we have double page spreads. So this is January. I put them in separate pages. I'm gonna show you how you can put them into a double page spread. Then we have February, then we have March. So I also went back to previous albums. And like I said, there's five of these. So we have over a hundred pages. So at any time, if you want to extend your project, you could always combine this template album with any of the previous albums. And you'll also notice if I go over to the store at Anna Aspinus Designs, I have put those albums on sale. So there are seven, six, five, and four. So there are four other template albums in addition to this one. They're all on 50% sale right now. So if you want more pages to your project, then you can go ahead and do that. Um, we're gonna start off with this temp template album. Um, so as you can see, we've got our front page, we've got our double pages. They go all the way through until December, where we have a December um, project, um, sorry, a December uh, page. And then we have a back page. Uh, I've also included the little calendars as a separate brush set. Um, I have included a um, book cover. So you can design a cover for your book if you want to print it as a photo book project. Uh, here are a variety of my photo books. So this is the end goal really, is to pick a theme for this year in January. Um, and because we have 12 months, the idea is to do a page a month. Everybody, no matter how busy you are, you can do a double page spread every month. So you do one for January, you do one for February, you do one for March, April, May, June. Now, if you decide you want to do two pages, then you can combine with one of the previous project albums because I specifically design them so that they are similar um, so that you can kind of mix and match them. Of course, I'm going to show you the editability of these different templates, how you can kind of remove the dates if you want to, or you can uh, change the way um, they look in certain respects. But the idea is, is that we're going to create a double page spread for every single month in December. Now, you're probably asking, well, what am I going to do my project on? Well, this is where you kind of have to do a bit of planning. Now, um, if you are new to me, um, then planning is a huge part of the photo book project. We're gonna do just a little bit of pre-planning. The idea is to come up with a theme and to set some parameters before we begin creating our project album. So it's not just a question of, let's just sit down and create a double page spread and hope for the best. We want to kind of think ahead about 
how we want our pages to come together. Um, because this is a template project, then it means that they're already cohesive. So it's really just a matter of adding photos and words. Um, you also want to consider how you're going to print this. I'm going to suggest that you go with a 12 by 12 book, but you can, of course, resize these pages down to 10 by 10 or 8 by 8. Just be mindful that when you're resizing pages, you want to make sure that the text is an appropriate size for printing. Because if you take a 12 by 12 book project and you condense that down to an 8 by 8, then when you reduce the size of this text, it's going to go down to six points, which means you're going to need glasses if you don't already have them. You're going to need a magnifying glass on top of your glasses to be able to read the text. So you are going to have to modify the text. Um, but you have the option, obviously, to kind of print. So definitely look into printing companies, how you want to print your pages. I like to print them in book format like this, but you can probably see behind me, I have a bunch of um, albums on my shelf behind me, and those are basically binders in which I have loose leaf pages and I put them into page protectors. Now for projects where I have a definite start and finish, which would be in this case where I'd be working on a project for the year, then I would definitely go with a photo book project format. I've also provided these um, brushes as well to work with the calendars and I'll show you how they work. So um, I just wanted to talk about some um, some layouts. So this is the these are some of the layouts that my team have made so far uh, this year using these different projects. Some of them are this is actually from 2002. Um, this one is from 2003. So you can see how the templates are very similar. Um, these are from 2004. So as you can see, they, they're very interchangeable, these templates. And you can pretty much do a project on whatever you like. Now, the most kind of natural way to approach this would be to basically do an overview of each of your months. So if you look on your phone, um, I take most of my photos on my phone these days, you may have a camera too. Um, if you do take photos with a camera, then go ahead and take a look, go back to your photos from last year. So if I'm going back to January of last year, I'm looking at the things that I typically take photos of. Now, I have some photos of my niece and nephew that my sister sent me. We took a trip to Cabo in 2023. I've already documented that trip, so I probably wouldn't include that. Um, I've got some pictures that I've downloaded from the internet. This is the moon, the big super moon that we had over Denver. I like to kind of use other people's photography sometimes if it speaks to me and it tells a story. And then I've got my kids, um, Ella sending me photos. I've got Luke doing his thing. Um, we've obviously got snowy dark days, um, my dog, um, a trip to see my friends. So I would go through my different uh, folders. I keep all of mine in folders and I'd be looking at, you know, the types of photos I take. So at this time of year, it's a lot of ski photos. It's a lot of family photos, um, a lot of photos of being outside with my friends. One of the things when I went through my fol fol folders is that one of the things I do consistently take pictures is of me walking my little dog um, and the reservoir. I take pictures of it. And so because I do a year in review project at the end of the year, then, you know, I was thinking, well, what are the other ways that I could use this project? Because I've never used this month review album and it's an opportunity. It's like even I can do a double page spread every month, even with all of the work that I do at Anna Aspinus Designs. And by the end of the year, I'm going to have a, a complete photo book project if I just do one double page spread a month. So what I could do is, is I could just take a sampling of my favorite photos from the year and drop them into the template. I could maybe go, OK, what was the theme for January? In this particular case, it was perhaps the snow, the weather. I've got lots of snowy pictures. It was even snowy in Flagstaff because I've got a picture of Ella and she had crazy snow as well. So maybe I talk about the snowy month of January in Colorado. So you can have multiple kind of a sampling of photos from your month that go into the templates, or you can be specific and maybe just focus on one story. Um, or you could get even more specific on that. My thought is, is because I take so many photos of the reservoir and my walks, 
wouldn't it be cool, especially as my dog is now 12 and I don't know how much more time I'm going to have left with him, um, wouldn't it be cool to document our walks through a year and kind of document the seasons and the change? So I go, I take the same dog walk every single day. I, I It varies very little, but the days that I go and the weather and the sky and the differences, I think that that would be a really cool way um, to perhaps use this project. Um, you know, with my kids not being here, then that's probably not um, an option. Another thing is too, is it's like, I'm really in the photo. I am really in the photo. Wouldn't it be cool if I actually made the point of taking a picture of myself every month and including it in my project? Because nobody ever thinks about taking a picture of me, except for once in a while, I'll do a selfie or somebody will capture an image of me. And so that was the other thing that I thought would be really cool to kind of introduce. The other thing is kind of travel. You know, I have a trip to Cabo here. I have a little trip to Arizona here. What if I documented a trip every month? And that doesn't necessarily need to be a vacation. It could be a day trip. It could be a lunch out. It could be a coffee date. It could be a trip to some local gardens. It could be a ski um, adventure. So maybe I focus on one adventure every month. Um, so these are the sorts of kind of ideas that I have been thinking about. As a memory keeper, I am very, um, I'm very connected to words. I love words. So what about collecting 12 quotes? And I can create a story or a, um, a double page spread about uh, 12 quotes that I have collected over, over, the, over the months. You know, thinking about the, the one word, you know, people quite, will quite often choose a word for the year. Um, if you have picked a word for the year, um, I have a couple of words. One of them is care. One of them is worthy. Um, and the other one is truth. So I have three words that I'm focusing on this year. So it could be that I create a page about my words and how I have honored those words and how I have focused on those words. It could be that you pick a word every month that defines your month um, and you can write something about that word and how it, you know, what it means for that particular um, for that particular month. So these are some of the thoughts. The other thing that I thought was really cool, and this is just wild to me, um, is that uh, one of my team members, she emailed me the other day. Uh, this is Joan. If I can, here we go. Uh, she emailed me, she sent me this photo and she said, you know, um, my plan for next year for scrapbooking is this, but I have this new hobby. And it was interesting to me because I have just signed up for a landscape watercolor class, uh, which um, is super exciting to me and I love it. Um, but I'm like, gosh, what if I were to document my year of walking the reservoir, but then I take some of those photos and I paint them and I include them in my project. So many of us have hobbies and interests outside of our scrapbooking. So what if we were to document those two? You, maybe you have a garden. Maybe you document the, the flowers in your garden. Maybe you like to play golf. So you document your progress and your accomplishments in playing that sport. You know, maybe you're a quilter or a sewer. I know Diane Weber on my design team, she does a lot of quilting and she will quite often include a lot of her work in her pages. But I thought this was really cool. And then just today, right before class, Jerry Lands, uh, Shutterbug over at O Scraps posted this where she has picked up, you know, she's got, she's an avid bird photographer and, a, and an animal photographer. And she's now documenting her photos with sketches. And I think that that's just a super way to include the sketches with the photo. So hopefully that provides you with a little bit of inspiration on directions that you can take in order to um, maybe come up with inspiration for 
uh, your monthly pages. Um, so it could be anything from a smattering of just finding a home for those snapshots, favorite snapshots that you take on your iPhone to focusing on a story or focusing on the words or having, um, having a, you know, a specific direction. I'm really interested in this hobby of how things change but also how they stay the same. So this is kind of like, I know I walk every day with the dog. I know that I'm always looking at the nature. I'm always looking at the sky. It always looks different from season to season to be able to document that change. You could do the same with your garden. You could do the same with your house. One of the things, because I'm such a hermit and a homebody, um, I actually want to do a project about just my home the things that are special in my home, you know, so maybe, you know, if you like to decorate your home, you know, you've got Easter, you've got Christmas, you've got summer, you've got different things that you bring into your home and the way you live in your home in the summer or the winter, you know, you wear slippers in the, in the winter because the floors are cold or, you know, in the summertime, you're boiling hot because you can't get the AC to go high enough. So these are all kind of fun ways that you can kind of document these boring, because a lot of people say, I'm not going to scrapbook because I've, my, my life is so boring. But sometimes the, the interest is in the boring. It's those really small um, changes um, at, or just noticing those small differences that can be um, really can make our life interesting. So anyway, hopefully I have kind of provided a little bit of information for you there. Um, Sharon says, do I see an aura ring? Yes, I have an aura ring. I love it. Um, it keeps me going to bed on time. <laughs> and it also tells me if I've had a good sleep and if I should be going to the gym or not the next day. I'm, I'm really trying hard. Like I said, one of my words for this year is care is to take better care of myself. And so part of that is um, sleep. But I have had the aura ring for a while. So if you want more information about themes, I have a PDF full of themes that you could consider. These are just some of the themes that I have been thinking about that would be interesting, I think, for you. Um, can be travel, can be every day, it can be a hobby, it can be a collection. We all have collections of things. It can just be an interest. So I invite you, um, kind of just as a closing part of that, to go ahead and take a look at your photos on your on your um on your phone um like i said go through and take a look and and notice of what you take photos of if you're not very good at taking photos which has been the case for me um certainly since my children left um i have struggled after 22 years to find a different muse i say a struggle i haven't struggled i like taking picture of nature when i'm out and about and i'm walking um the different sky cloud configurations uh the different colors um i really enjoy that part of photography and i'm sure i i just picked up a book on collage too so i'm kind of getting interested in that too and so getting back to um kind of focusing through the lens and getting back to my photography um, but I think that if you take a look at what you tend to take a fo take photos of on your computer or on your phone, that can maybe guide you into what you might be interested in documenting with this uh, particular uh, template album. Um, so just kind of checking the chat box here. Sharon says some very good tips for this procrastinator. And that is true. And Amazon items, well, yeah, you could totally do that. I tell you what, Eric could make a 100-page album with the amount of stuff he orders from <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it can literally be anything. But when I think of documenting, I think, you know, what do I love taking photos of? What do I want to focus on this year in terms of words and intention? And what do I want to share? What do I want to document? Um, so for me, I'm thinking, um, you know, like I said, the nature photos, um, perhaps including my adventures into landscape watercolor painting, um, and then maybe focusing a little bit on the words that I've selected for this year. So just a couple of ideas there. All right, let's jump into the templates. So 
Uh, this is how the templates arrive. You can see that uh, this is a bunch of different pages that have been made. Um, we'll perhaps go and take a look at those afterwards. But you can see that I have multiple um, template albums or multiple folders here. This is how the, um, the templates are delivered. I put them into multiple folders so that they're really easy for you to download. They will be, they will come to you as zip files, so you'll have to unzip them. But what I like to do is I like to actually take the PSD files um, and kind of move them out of the folders. That way they're gonna sit with their previews and then I have access to all of them. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing that I like to do. You can see I already have all the previews in here. And then that way I can kind of see. And if I want to switch them up, I can do. I'm not sure I would recommend doing that because that's just going to add more um, process to working with these templates. I would certainly just try and use them as they are. And I think that they're varied enough that you could do that. But of course, if you decide you like the format of these March templates, let's go ahead and just minimize this. So this is March. If you decide you like March better than you like January, then you can totally just switch around the months. Um, so you can change this using the brush set. You just remove it and you can um, basically replace this with March and then add January. So you can kind of switch those words around just to kind of keep it simple. So once you have your templates, what I like to personally do is to create a new layout. And we do this by going to File New. This is the same in Photoshop Elements if you happen to be working in Photoshop Elements. And I have a preset here, but you want to have a width of 24 because you want double the width. Two times 12 is 24. You want to have a height of 12 and you want to have um, a resolution of 300. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. And I actually like to create a guide and I do this by selecting the move tool from the tools panel. I click into my rulers. If your rulers are unavailable, go to view and ensure that option is checked. And then I like to click in the center here. And that just basically helps me be able to see where the first page is and where the second page is. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these two templates together. And the beauty of this is then that you can design your two pages side by side. Um, and this is really helpful for when you place photos and you want to ensure that you have balance between colors um, and just the design, the aesthetics of the particular page. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these two templates. Now you wanna bring these two templates into your workspace. You can either drag them in from their location or you can go to file open and you can access them from there. Um, I usually just like to drag them in and you want to pull them into the background of your workspace. You do not want to drag them actually onto your canvas. If you try to drag them directly onto your canvas, you're gonna end up with all of those layers getting compressed into a single layer. So as you can see right now, I've just added those two templates and you can see all we've got here are two flattened layers, which is really just no good to us whatsoever. You can see like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete those. If we bring these templates in, so this is B and this is A, I definitely recommend you try and use these uh, templates in pairs. If you decide you want to change around the dates on them, totally do that, but keep them in pairs because they're designed to coordinate with one another and they're well balanced and that's gonna save you a lot of time. But in the, in the layers panel, you're gonna click on the first layer and you're gonna click on the background layer. And then with the move tool selected, I'm just gonna uncheck this auto select just so that we don't mess up here. And I'm gonna click and drag to bring those layers. Now look, if you look at my layers panel, you can see we've got all of these layers and this is what we want because this is a template. And the idea is, is to clip our photos to the template um, or to the different layers in the template. Once we have that one in there like that, then we can go ahead and we can select the second one. Make sure that you have your cursor at the top of the panel. Um, that way, when you introduce new layers, then they are going to be added to the top of the panel. So I'm going to click on that first layer, hold down that shift button with my left mouse but button depressed. It's going to select all of those layers. And then I'm going to left click that mouse button, drag, release that left mouse button, 
And as I click and drag, so hold down that left mouse button, then I'm able to reposition that and move it into place. You can see that it snaps nicely into position there. So now we have our double page spread. You can work single, single, single page spread if you wanted to. You could do one story over two pages. You could do two stories on each side of the page. So you could cover a, two different stories in January. You could also just do, like I said, a smattering of different types of photos and use all of these different text boxes to write a few words about the different photos that you've added that represent your month of January. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can modify these templates. You can, of course, turn off. I've actually created this calendar page, but if you look here, there's a couple of layers that have been turned off. So you can actually turn off the calendar completely. There we go. And you can turn this back on. Uh, there we go. And you can make it into a frame. So the layers are included with each of these calendars if you decide you don't want to use them. Again, you can go in there and you can turn this off. With this particular album, I did make the conscious decision not to add any decoration. So if you go back and you look at some of the previous templates here, um, if we go down and we look at them, there's, a, there's some decoration in there. So there's some hipster plumes on this one. Uh, there are some flowers on the previous one. We have number six here. And there are differences, obviously, in the way that I've done the months. Um, but the, the, the frames are the same. So you can see that there, there are some flowers on this particular one. Um, but very, very similar. So you can kind of mix and match them. So if, for example, you need two pages per month, want to do two pages a month, maybe you want to do a page every week, then that's totally um, an option that's available for you. Um, you can take any of the brush sets at Anna Aspinus Designs too. So if you go to the brush sets here, there are lots of different brushes that you can use. Um, for example, if you were doing a travel project, you might want to add some postage. These fun stains here, um, there are some text brushes. Uh, there are some, um, these look like snowflake brushes, there's heart brushes, lots of different ways that you can use those different brushes to kind of embellish your pages and, and customize them yourself. I'm just going to stop here and make sure that we have um, any questions. Uh, Sharon says, can you touch on the difference between RGB and CMY, uh, CMYK and why you would use either one? I recommend you use RGB. So uh, they're, they're two different color spaces. Um, RGB is tends to be the one that um, is used within Photoshop. CMYK is more for kind of professional printers. Um, I've always used RGB. So that's kind of what I recommend is just sticking with that, that profile. Um, I think you'll find that when you upload your uh, photo books, then the colors will come out best. Um, I'm not, I don't know too much about um, the differences between the two, other than the fact that the RGB space is the one that is typically used within Adobe Photoshop and CMYK is more for kind of professional printing. Um, and then it looks like there's a couple of issues with um, being inside here. Um, I'm not sure what the issue is. So anyway, I wouldn't worry about not being seen in the attendees list, Pat, um, as long as you can kind of see what I'm doing. So um, I'm gonna kind of press on with um, the other options. So the other thing that I've done with these different templates here is that I have created these labels, um, which are kind of fun because you can kind of turn them on or turn them off. You can also rotate them. So you can go to edit, transform and rotate it. And so these are really fun because you can kind of provide um, ways to add little notes to your layout design. So if I go back to our layouts up here, you can see, I think Michelle here, uh, she's used one of these frames to actually clip a paper to. Um, but I thought that I had seen somewhere where she, so here you can see on this one where she has added in a little note on these labels. So I think that those are super fun there. We also have um, 
if you decide that you want to use the calendar, so let's go back and turn on those calendar layers. So very easy to turn layers on and off. You can also illustrate um, the dates if you want to use the calendar format. So to do this, you're gonna to go to window, you're going to select this brushes option, which is gonna open your brushes panel. If you're working in Adobe Photoshop um, elements, then when you select the paintbrush tool, then your options at the bottom of your screen here, you're going to be able to import um, or access your brush options there. You can also use the brush preset manager. I do have a free class over at Anna Aspinus Designs. If you go to store and you go to free, free classes, there is a class in there that's gonna show you the basics of using brushes. Um, so just kind of a side note there. But what I like to do to load my brushes is to go to the template album. Um, and we have in the last part, uh, a bunch of different things. So we've got the calendar brushes. Uh, so you can add in the calendar brushes. So let's go ahead and just drag those into my workspace. I wanna drag them over to my panel here. You can actually see I already have them loaded, um, but that's going to load those in the bottom there. So we have my calendar brushes. And then the other brushes that I've included uh, is this bonus brush set. Now, if you uh, downloaded this template album before the weekend, uh, then you need to go and re-download it because I um, did not add the ABR file. So it now has an ABR file in there. Um, we have, these brushes here. So these are pretty cool. Um, the idea of these brushes really is to, like I said, document the date. So if I go ahead and zoom in here, what I would suggest you do is you select the calendar month. So here's the calendar month. If I wanted to switch that out, I just create a new layer, select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel. If you wanna have a different color, you can do. Uh, let's go maybe with a dark blue like that, for example like the idea of dark blue. And then you can go in there and say, I want it to be March. March is my birthday month, so let's go ahead and add that. So you just stamp it on there and it's on the new layer. So I can kind of go in there and I can change that around. If you want to rotate it slightly, then you select the move tool from the tools panel. You ensure you have the show transform controls options checked. In elements, that's the bounding box option. You wanna make sure that that's checked. And then you can just rotate it slightly so that the bounding box aligns with the border of your calendar. And then, like I said, you wanna create a new layer for every single brush stroke, but I've provided um, a bunch of different types. So we've got these filled options. Now with these filled options, I recommend you placing the new layer below. So here's March. I'm gonna add in our date name here. And then here I'm gonna add the dots. So maybe I want to do like yellow. So let's go ahead and select a bright yellow as if it's kind of a one of those luminous markers. And I can go in there and I can select any of these dates. So um, I can do that. Um, I can do the same with these rounded rectangles. Maybe this one I want blue. So it might be that you have different color codes. You might wanna do kind of them side by side if, if it's a trip or it covers a couple of different days. Um, so these are pretty new, these filled ones. I haven't done these filled ones before. We also have the strike through. So again, I would recommend that you put these kind of below where you put that in there. If you want to shorten it, you can just use a selection tool, use the arrow keys and then hit delete on your keyboard and you can kind of make that shorter. So that's another way you can highlight it that way. Um, and then of course, we've got the standard, standard square here. Uh, let's go ahead and create that. So again, just a different shape. They're all perfectly sized, so you don't need to kind of change them in any, any way. Um, and then we've got the same thing. We've got a couple of different options where you can kind of place the new layer on top where you can go in and probably need something a little bit darker for this. So let's go and choose red, which is usually a favorite color of mine. So maybe we have 27th, 28th, 29th, 30. Uh, just a tip, if you wanna have a little bit more control, zoom in. Um, and that's going to help you kind of get in there. I like them being a little what I would call higgledy piggledy here. Um, I much prefer that than them being super neat. Um, but again, you can do a strike through. Um, and there are three different widths. So you've got, I believe it's three pixels, five pixels, 
and 10 pixels. So you can choose how thick you want to have those different circles. So just a fun way there um, of being able to kind of denote the different dates. And of course, the, the brush sets are differ with each of the template albums. So there'll be a different brush set with each one of those. Um, so that is that part there. Let's talk about kind of just the basics of using a template. So I'm going to use my January photos and just kind of, let's say I'm going to just do an overview of January of last year. And then I'm going to, I will answer your question in a minute, Pat, just want to kind of start with this. So I'm going to start with January and I'm going to look through my photos. I've got kind of a fairly decent amount here, um, but I would basically pick out my two top photos, my two best photos that I'm going to clip to those masks. So for me, like I said, I'm a huge fan of the reservoir at this time of year. But then I love my kiddos. And then, I mean, who doesn't love this little guy? He's so cute. Um, but the quality of the photo isn't that le that great. Then we've got Luke being Luke. Um, so generally, and then there's also a picture of me, which is really rare. I look very tired there and stressed there. But this one's kind of fun. So maybe I put myself in the big picture. Um, so I'm going to pull my photo into my workspace here. I'm going to show you two different ways of using these masks. So these are what I call photo blends clipping masks. And these allow you to blend your photos into your background with ease using the clipping mask function in Photoshop or Elements. So I'm going to select that layer in the layers panel. And then I'm going to, with the move tool selected from the tools panel, click, drag, and place that photo over the top of the mask. It might be that I need to just increase the size of it. I wanna make sure that the edges of the photo fully extend over the mask and go to layer, create clipping mask like that. Um, and that's pretty good. And then maybe I will do the reservoir photo down the bottom there. And it could be that I change my mind. I might wanna kind of just change my mind here, but the idea is to try and get your colors to balance on two sides of the page here. So this photo is a little smaller. Bring this up like this. Go to layer, create clipping mask and move it over. So um, I would put my two top photos in there. And I'm kind of thinking that this is probably a bit too big. That's a lot of Anna in one photo. So let's see if we can kind of move this up and put it in a different spot. So this is what I mean is you can kind of change your mind. So the frame masks work just the same as the blended masks, go to layer, create clipping mask, and then you can resize the photo. And so you're gonna do that with all of these different images. Um, you're gonna add your photos in. Um, not gonna go ahead and add all of those because we're gonna run out of time, but um, you're gonna add all of your photos to the frame masks and to the photo blends clipping masks. And then what I like to do is as I like to, you can keep these stains exactly how they are. There are times where I keep them the same, but what I like to do is, is I like to recolor these stains so that they coordinate with my photos. So you can see the top portion of my photo here is blue. So that is gonna be the color that I use to um, recolor this stain. Now what I do is, is I select the move tool from the tools panel and I sh and ensure that I have this auto select option checked. When I have this auto select option checked, it means that I can click on anything in my template and it's going to select that layer in the layers panel. So I'm gonna select that. Notice how it selects that corresponding layer in the layers panel. And then I'm gonna to go to edit fill. Ensure I have that preserve transparency box checked because we just want to color the stain and not fill the entire layer with color and then go ahead and click sample that area like that. Um, so that now our color is the same color as our photo and then click okay. And it's going to recolor that stain. And then I'm gonna repeat that with the next stain. Notice now when I click on that next stain, it selects this stain down here. Now we've got, we could, we could recolor this blue, but it's also going to recolor everything blue down here. So I think what I wanna do is, is I wanna have more of a gray color for this one. So I'm gonna sample more of a dark gray color. And so we're gonna to go to edit fill. Now, if I don't have that preserved transparency box checked, 
and I go ahead and I sample that kind of grayish color and click OK, it's going to fill the whole layer with color. So that's why it's super important that when you go and you fill, you preserve that box like that. And then if you want to darken any of those stains, you can increase the levels. So increase the shadows. You can make them lighter by increasing the highlights. But that's how I like to handle the stains. You can then choose a solid paper or you can just keep the background white. Um, for this particular project, because I want it to be super simple, it could be that I just use the Photoshop background and I just focus on the photos. Or maybe I go to my art play palettes, and let's just do it from the store, but you can go to the art play palettes because I have them all here. And I can pick a solid paper from any of these art play palettes in the color that I want to use. So in this case, we've got lots of blue. So maybe I go with a light blue. Maybe I go with a light gray. I add that into the mix there. So once you have your photos in place, imagine that all of these are filled in here. These overlapping frames, I would use a, um, I would use an artsy paper or a artsy card. So if I go to my archives, I'm looking for a blue. So this um, Art Play Mini Palette Wazo, this is a good one. Just super small little mini palette that was a free with purchase, but it's blue. It's got some nice, um, nice colors in there that are very similar to the photos that I've already selected. And so I would select again with the move tool and that auto select option checked, click on that mask. So it finds the corresponding mask in our layers panel and then drag this in. So before I was dragging the photo into the background um, and then moving it onto my layout design. In this case, because we've already pre-selected where we want that paper to go, I can place it directly on the canvas, move it around. I can resize it if I want to. So maybe we get this little bird in there like that. Oh, that's not gonna work because we haven't covered the entire mask. So let's move it in a different direction. There's always different options like that. So you want to make sure the mask is covered, then you're going to go to layer, create clipping mask. And so that's what I would do with these overlapping areas. And then for the type, you're going to select the type tool from the tools panel. This is just type that I have filled. You can see that it creates a text box so that when you go in there, you basically select the type using that type tool. So you're going to click on the type you're going to select all of the type and then you can start typing. And the beauty of the text te uh, the, the text box, notice how that it contains my type. So I can type in there or I can type in a Word document or I can copy and paste a quote or whatever kind of text I want to add. And it's going to fit really nicely into that box. You can, of course, modify these boxes by clicking in the text box and dragging these edges out. Um, so right now they're pretty much as they should be. I wouldn't mess with them too much, but if you need to expand them slightly, like this one, for example, you could make this one taller, you could bring it out. Just be careful when you are working with these particular templates. You'll notice that uh, the actual original template, if I go and I just reopen that really fast, um, Let's open it up. You can see that I've added guides. So this one's a little bit large, this particular guide here. But notice I've added these blue guides. So in these are basically the areas where you do not want to have any important details because when you send these pages to print, these edges might get trimmed. Um, so this involves the a quarter of an edge quarter of an inch around the edge of your page. And then it's usually half an inch uh, in the center. Now, I usually have stains and splatters going across. This is because sometimes people like to print lay flat, flat books where the page transitions immediately into the second page. That I like to print in, a, print in a classic book, just mainly out of cost purposes. And that involves binding half an inch of the page into the center. It doesn't bother me at all that I lose these um, 
these different kind of stains. But obviously, you don't want to be in a position where you extend your tax box so that the tax comes over like this, because then you're going to end up losing the tax in the spine of your album. So just something to be mindful of with, with that there. Now I'm going to go ahead and just answer this question really fast. Um, Pat says, which of the seven zip files for the month review template do we need to re-download to get the brush file? It's the last one. It's the one with the cover and the photo book and all the different bonuses in. So um, anything else, any other questions about that? So that's kind of the basics of it. Um, once you've added your photos in, you've recolored the stains, you've added your journaling and modified the text boxes, I would perhaps add a... Um, an element cluster, <laughs> excuse me. So I would add some embellishments to either side of the page <coughs> and I keep it super simple. So I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm all coughing all of a sudden. <coughs> so I would just pick when I know that I have some multimedia in here. I like the multimedia elements because they are already made for you. You don't have to think about having to put anything together yourself. And so I definitely recommend this approach. Um, and they work really well. You just need to add one either side. So for example, this one here, I would go to the top of my layers panel. I would select the different layers and go ahead and move this onto my layout design. And then I do the same on this side. So for me, the biggest issue um, or the biggest time uh, time thing with this particular double page spread is really just adding the photos and making sure that they that you add them in different ways. I'm going to try and keep up with this project. I'm going to do it. So I'm hoping to be able to post uh, my my project somewhere. I don't know if I'm going to do it on my blog. Probably on my blog, I'll probably put it on there. And I'll talk a little bit about the different design decisions. What I'm thinking about right now is the fact that I've got this photo here where um, I've got this bright pink hat. And so obviously, if I don't have any bright pink over here, then I'm going to want to make sure that I add some sort of digital element that has some bright pink so it creates that balance. I talk about this a lot in my project template album class. Um, so if you're interested in picking that one up, if you haven't done it yet, highly recommend it. But really, I would keep this simple. Um, I would stay with a white background or choose a single neutral light colored background for your entire project. Uh, decide on the theme that you're going to do so that you know what you're doing from month to month, um, whether you're going to document your garden, whether you're going to document some walks that you go on, whether it's a hobby, whether it's a collection, whether it's a pastime, whether it's just documenting your life or your home or your travel, whatever it is, I just feel like it's just a simple way that you can create a project for the entire year, a double page spread. I mean, if you keep it simple and you do it the way that I've recommended, where you don't fuss with the background, you add the photos, you recolor the stains, you add in the images, you use a simple multimedia element on each side of your page and you add your journaling and you call it good. I reckon it would maybe maximum take you two hours a month. Um, I could probably get it done maybe in 45 minutes. Um, so something to think about, something I encourage you to do. Uh, like I said, AA Project is on sale. If you have not done that, there was tons of new stuff in this particular project. I also have put all of the other uh, month review template albums on sale too. So that if you decide you want to do more than one page a month, um, then again, if you did two pages a month, then you would have what, 48, 48 pages at the end of the year. I mean, two double page spreads, you could do a double page spread every two weeks, or that's one single page every week. Um, for those of you that did my AA project who were doing a page every day, um, it's cake. It's absolute cake. So that pretty much kind of ends my presentation. Let me know if you have any questions about the templates. Um, I'd love to answer them for you. Um, 
yeah and let me know if you're gonna what theme you're gonna do i would love to hear the different themes i'd love to see um i'm usually on facebook i usually try and pop into the oh scraps gallery if you want to email me your page then you can go ahead and um it, then you can just send it to me at classes at Anna Aspinus Designs. I'd love to see it. Um, you know, maybe I'll start a Facebook group. You know, if you're, you guys are interested in having a Facebook group to post these pages, um, then maybe I'll start that as well. And we can kind of add our pages in there. I think it would be really fun to have kind of just a yearly group where we go in and the inspiration is one page. So maybe I'm going to do that. Uh, Sharon, you'll have to go back to the email, your downloads where you um, got that, or you go back to your account and you should be able to download from there. If the link has expired, then you can contact Vicky at oscraps.com and that should be able to, uh, she should be able to help you. Um, so a couple of different ways. Any other questions? Okay. Well, that's it then, my friends. Um, hopefully I have provided a little bit of inspiration for you. Um, you know, just super simple. Like I said, keeping it real simple. Uh, we're not, you know, doing brain science here. <laughs> I'm just like thinking, you know, we wait until December to do this template album, but what if we also did something throughout the year and then inst instead of just having one album at the end of the year or how many you do, um, I just think it's a, just a really nice way to space it out. Um, so Sharon says, thanks for this. Enjoyed it very much. Thank you for being here. And Denise says, thank you for the inspiration. Joanne liked the inspiration too. Uh, Kim said, awesome inspiration. So thank you. Uh, Laura says, do you have a kit that's mostly elements that will work with the templates? Any of the, any of the kits that I have work with the templates. It's really going to depend on the theme that you choose and the color. So um, as I kind of said, you know, I depending on, on the colors that you're that you're using, obviously if I were to do a um project where we have, let's go back to my photos real fast. But if I were to do a project where I'm doing a whole smattering of different photos from my that from my uh from my month, then obviously I'm gonna have all of these different colors. So I'm going to want to try and keep my supplies fairly neutral. So for me, that would mean going into my art play palettes. I like to use, I actually use the store personally as a reference. But I would be looking at very neutral. I mean, luckily, a lot of my palettes are neutral. If you look at the background papers, they're fairly neutral colors. And then I introduce color using elements. Um, so it really just kind of depends. But a lot of these are neutral papers. These are kind of uh, neutral tones with blues. We've got neutral tones with blues. We've got even more neutral tones up here. So any of these would kind of work. Um, I would definitely suggest if you're doing um, that type of project, you stay with a white or a light gray or a cream background. Um, if you're doing a travel project, let's say for example, you decide, you know what, I'm gonna take this opportunity. Every month I've been dying to get my photos from Alaska put into a, a photo book project, but I just don't have time to work on it because I've got X, Y, and Z going on. So set yourself a goal of doing a double page spread every month. Um, a lot of the photos in Alaska are lots of blues, are lots, of, lots of greens. So in that case, you're going to want to focus your, um, your thoughts on art play palettes that have blues and greens. Um, now, the best way to do this is to get the whole collection. So every month I, I create a new collection. I'll be working on a new one next month. It's likely to be something blue um, and to do with the cold weather that we, we've been having, um, like this one, for example. And we also bring back an older collection, a classic collection that um, is... Um, back for a week. So we kind of feature it. We offer a 50% discount. We bundle it with the artsy transfers, but you can see that these, they all coordinate. So you have a template. I'm looking here, here are the, um, the elements. So it's really going to depend on your subject um, of, and the colors that you're using. I tend to pick my collections based on color as opposed to theme and then I will, I, I just love the, the multimedia elements and because you can go into the multimedia elements here and you can see that they're already pre, 
um, pre-done for you. So you can just drop them onto your page and they all work really, really well with these templates. You're just going to place them in an area where it makes sense. You know, obviously this particular multimedia branch here, um, you know, you don't, you don't want to have it down here because it's going to come off the page. So you're going to put it in a place where it makes sense. Like right here, it's covering the, um, the calendar right here. It's kind of not really in the right spot. So this is where you can kind of start playing around and going, okay, how can I just kind of make this work with my particular, so something like that would work. You have the option to make certain elements smaller, you have the option as well to turn off particular elements like that. So you don't necessarily have to use the entire element. You can also move around these elements independently as well. So that's kind of how I would think about it is just kind of keep it simple, put your photos in, take a look at the colors. What are the ma majority colors um, in there? Pick papers, like I picked this blue paper here, based on the blues, add those into these overlapping frames. You can also move frames around as well. So if you wanted to take frames and you wanted to move them, I've missed a, a mask there. You wanna make sure you get all the frame, but you can turn off the frames um, and you can also move the frames around. You can rotate the frames. So you have lots of different options for kind of making these frames work for your particular composition. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Um, and then Ray says, sometimes when I stretch the text box, I cannot resize the text font to the same size as the other text boxes without bringing in the text box from the template again. Do you have the same problem? So that, yes. So I know what you're doing here. Um, if you don't click on the actual, so I'm going to select the type tool from the tools panel. Let's zoom in. Now, if I go and I want, say this text box here. So I want this text box. I got to select it. Why is it not letting me grab this text box? Oh, it's because the photo glows over it. That's why. Got to watch those uh, sneaky photo glows. Okay, so I've got the text box here. I think what you're doing is you're not selecting the type tool ray and you are, if you try and increase the size of the box using the move tool, it's going to increase or decrease the size of the text. If you take the text tool and you physically click on the text, notice how the bounding box changes and the cursor is actually placed in the text. When you increase the size, notice how you're able to change and increase the size of the box, but the text just moves. Now, if you're in a position where you end up messing up the text because you use the move tool to resize, then it's totally fine. All you have to do is go back to another text box, select some of the text, and then go and look in your options here. And here it says it's Arial Narrow, and it's 10 point size. So that means that if I go now back to the text in this text box and I select that text, you can see I've increased it to 12.64. I can just go back down and change that text to 10 again. So that's how I would deal with that problem there. Um, and then Sharon said, I wish I could buy all of them. I know, just basically pick the ones. Again, it's really helpful to look at your photos and see the types of photos you take. I find myself professionally creating a lot of blue and green kits because I have a lot of photos that are blue and green. And so it just tends to be that. And I'm very inspired by my environment and nature. So pay attention to the colors in your photos and try and stick to um, kits that um, have those colors. And again, neutral colors. I do tend to design on the neutral side so that you can use my kits for a variety of different photos. It's not the intent for me that you buy a kit and you just use it once. I want you to be able to use it over and over. In fact, I was just on Facebook today and somebody posted a layout with a kit that I did when I was pregnant with Luke and he just turned 19 in November. And she's like, hey, do you remember this? And I was like, oh, yes, I do. So it just goes to show that, you know, they can stand the test of time and, and people are still using my kits from 20 years ago. 
Um, and then Dulla says, I have a hard time locating items purchased from AA as they are in a store folder. Even in an AA folder, I sometimes have a hard time locating what I wish to use. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to, I don't know if you're on a Mac or in a PC, but I like to use the search feature in Elements to find things. So um, I will often use that option. I will go to the folder like I have a bunch of my new releases here. I've got... Um, my archives here. I tend to organize my stuff in collections and I tend to work in collections. So for me, I will go to the store. I will decide on the art play palette that I'm going to use for a page um, or for a group of pages. And then once I've selected that art play palette, I make it really easy on myself. I then go and I go, I want Vagary. Vagary, here it is. I've got an art play palette, I've got artsy cards, I've got birds, and I try and work within collections because I find that it saves me a lot of time. Um, I also use a different tool too. I talk about that a lot in my classes. If you're interested in checking that out, there's, a, there's another tool out there if you're working on a PC um, that can help you kind of do some searching there. Um, I think that's it. PC, yeah, so... Um, thank you so much for the kind words. Thank you for being here. I think we have, so I, I, um, I, the last couple of classes, it's actually a tool. I forget what the tool is called. Otherwise I would, um, everything tool. It's called the everything search tool. It was actually brought to my attention by, um, a fellow student. It's in the last couple of classes. So it's in project 2023. It is in, um, I want to say it was in the travel project too. I know it's definitely in the project 2023 um, that I use that as well. Um, okay. Um, I think that's everything. I'm so glad you're inspired, Jesse. That makes me super happy. I'm actually going to do one of these free classes every month. Um, they're not all obviously going to be month review classes, but um I definitely am going to be doing um, a free class every month, kind of just real basic stuff that we don't think about um and We'll see how that goes. So that's going to be super exciting. Ruby Lynn says, I think I will use my reviews for some of the decades photos. It's becoming quite overwhelming. So I love that you guys have um, have some ideas. I'm going to set up a Facebook group. I will include that this weekend when I send out the newsletter. Um, and if you, if you feel so inclined and want to share your pages, um, I think it would be really, really fun for us to be able to um, share the different themes and pages there. So like I said, super simple, easy class. Um, if you are willing and able, then I think that it's a no-brainer. Like I said, it's not rocket science. We're not doing anything crazy here. You're going to see that my pages are super simple. My aim is to try and get a page done, um, like I said, once a month, maybe within an hour um, and call it good. And then by December, we can all celebrate because we're all going to be printing our photo books. So with that, I am going to go ahead and leave. If you have any questions, email me at classes at Anna Aspinus Designs. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you create. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.